Hey guys, how's it going? It's right again, and welcome back to my channel. So thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. I also wanted to ask you, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, to please do so by just clicking on the button below and hitting subscribe because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. Today I'm really excited because I'm going to bring you another Oculus development video. In this video, we're basically going to be implementing a weapon system that I did to show you some of the fundamentals of capturing information from the control. We're basically going to know when the control trigger is getting pressed and then when it's getting pressed we're basically going to shoot a bullet through the weapon that we have so let's jump into unity and i start working on it all right guys so let me show you what i did in unity to get the scene set up so you probably recognize this scene by the asset that came from the asset store so this was created by cinta studio and i'm basically using the asset just to show you the power of the asset but what I want to do in this video is focus on the weapon system that I created. And it's very basic right now, but I'm going to be extending it as we, you know, as we work on this game. So what I have right now is I have basically one weapon. And if I show you the hierarchy, let me show you the setup of everything in here. We have a directional light. I have the environment. So you can see that everything in the environment is part of that game object, which is basically the entire, the entire city. I also ended up adding a lot of robots and you can see that each robot has a box collider and the reason why they have a box collider is because I'm basically shooting at them and I want to make sure that I'm detecting collisions so I'll show you more about that here in just a second so everything on their environment is basically you know the entire environment and then the robots are all the way on the very bottom which you can kind of see here character robot is, is getting duplicated multiple times so the, the way that I have the robot set up is right now I have a rigid body and it's using gravity on that rigid body, the mass on each one of these except the bigger ones that are on the very back. The, the one for this one is 5, the ones on the very back are from 40 to 50 because I wanted to make him a little heavier. And then I just basically have a box collider associated with them and then I also have a layer of enemy. And the reason why I have a layer of enemy assigned to them is because when the bullet tries to when I try to aim on one of them I have a ray cast that comes from the bullet to the to the robot and if it is the robot which is the enemy then I know that I'm colliding with one of the enemies so what I'm gonna show you next is the next component so the next thing is the control so you probably know if you watch some of my previous videos that I'm using the OVR player controller that Oculus provided so this is probably very familiar with you if you if you if you've done that or if you've seen the SDK that they provide through the asset store. If you haven't, please make sure that you watch one of my previous videos because I walk you through how this works. So this is similar setup to like one of the videos that I already did. It has a character controller. I al I also have an OVR player controller, an OVR scene sample control, and then my OVR debug info. And then inside I have the forward direction game object. I have my OVR camera rig, which I also show you in another video how to use that on its own. So one thing that is important, and I want to mention this because it's really important for anybody that is doing development on Oculus, make sure that you select Quest if you're using the Oculus Quest on the OVR camera rig because that is a non-issue. I know a lot of you have, a, have issues with the controller not working well, and that's been one of the problems that I had. If that is not set to Quest, it's not going to work. It's basically going to move, but it's not going to move at a regular speed and then the other thing that I also tell people to do is make sure that you go to oculus and then tools and then click on remove android manifest and then go back to this menu and click on create a store compatible android manifest because that fixes a lot of issues so if you don't those two things that should actually fix the problems that you have with the controller if it doesn't please send me you know you can send me an email or you can let me know in the comments all right just to continue on the setup here I have a tracking space which is basically part of the OVR camera rig and then I have all my anchors for the left eye, the center, the right eye and then the, the thing that is important in this video is I'm using a weapon controller so I'm gonna do it in the future where we're gonna look at the active basically the active hand, the hand that you desire to use the controller on and then we can set the weapon based on that but for now I'm right-handed so I'm using the right the right hand anchor but if you want to test this scene and, and you want to do something similar, just make sure that you put this in the in the correct game object. So 
The next thing that I have is, this is basically part of the OVR camera rig that's already something that Oculus provides. So what I added for this video is I added a weapon controller. And you can see that one of the things that's really important is to know is that this is at the same level as the right controller anchor. Don't put it inside because it's gonna act funny. Make sure that you put it at the same level that the right controller anchor is at, and then everything should work just good. So the next thing that I wanna show you is, let me just, let me go ahead and hit play, and I wanna show you how, how it works right now with the implementation that I have. So I'm gonna hit play. And let me let me mute the audio so that you can hear me. So right now, if I what I have in the controller, and I'm going to show you the code in a minute, is I can hit the space bar if I want to. So if I hit the space bar, it's actually shooting, and you can see that by by looking at the looking at the scene view. You can also look in here. It's really hard to see in here because we're using the center eye anchor here. But what I'm doing is I'm basically, so you can see there's a, there's something positioned right in front of the, the, the weapon. And if I hit a space, it's basically just shooting bullets. You can see bullets also showing and going away in the hierarchy. And that's because I have a, a Boolean, basically, a property, basically, that tells me, you know, how long to keep the bullet for. And you can see it right here on the right-hand side. So that's basically how this works. The other thing that I had issues with is basically if I let's say that I wanted to move, I wanted to move the weapon to the to the left, and I keep shooting, and let's say that I wanted to aim, you know, if I wanted to aim that way, and I shoot, but then I change my mind and I and I rotate it. So if you don't set up the basically the weapon at the proper location, let's say that you have your bullets going inside of the weapon controller, and then you rotate the weapon controller the bullets are going to change the position based on the position of the rotation of the weapon and they're not going to look realistic so that's why i'm basically putting the if you look at the bullets they are actually outside of the right hand anchor the reason i do that is because if i rotate this i don't want the bullets to rotate that was one issue that i had when i was developing this so right now it works well if i rotate the bullets don't rotate with it it's hard to see because i am rotating not at a fast fast speed so let me show you the next piece. So I'm just gonna hit play to stop the game. So if we go into it, you can see that I have a weapon controller. So the weapon controller is basically a controller that allows me to determine when to shoot a bullet. It also has, so you can specify what the bullet prefab is gonna be. And if I if I click on it, you can see that the bullet is very, it's very simple. So I'm just gonna put it right here. And the other thing that I wanted to show you on the bullet I also have some code in the bullet when I hit play. So I'm gonna hit play so that you can see what's happening. And let me see if that if that works. And let me do that again, but I'll I'll say kinematic on the bullet. And let me just put the bullet right here so you can see what's happening with the bullet. So if I set it to kinematic and I hit play, you're gonna see that there is a there is a raw trace that is right in front of the bullet. It's really hard to see, but and actually it doesn't show right now because I'm not playing the game. But I have a ray cast that I'm that I'm doing on a distance on this bullet to determine if there's an enemy right in front of me. You can kind of see as I, as I move around the ray cast is actually showing. So that's something that I that I implemented so that I could avoid issues when colliding with the enemies. If you don't do something like that, and let's say that you just rely on physics, it's not gonna look good, and sometimes the bullet goes through the enemy. And then it doesn't detect a collision because the bullet is going is going too fast. So you gotta make sure that you're you're careful with that. And that's what I implemented the bullet with the ray cast. So let me show you some of the next pieces. So you saw that I have a bullet prefab, and I'll walk you through some of the components, some of the options in the bullet in just a minute. So I'm just gonna leave the bullet there just for demonstration purposes. And then so we have a bullet prefab, which is basically that prefab. The next thing that I have is a weapon. So if you look in here, this is one of the weapons that this component that Cinti Studios provided has. They also have a lot more, but for now I just kept it simple. And I just have one weapon. What I'm gonna do in some of the next videos, and I'm gonna I'm gonna basically add a toggle so we can toggle through multiple, basically go through multiple weapons, and they have a lot of different ones in here that we could use. We can basically add this one if we wanted to, and I could change the I basically could change the component if I like to. I think the one that I have right now, it's okay. But if I wanted to add another one, look at they have this one, which I show in some of the videos that I did in Twitter. And that one looks really cool too. 
So we'll keep that for the next video where I'm going to allow you to change basically weapons and then we can have a setup for each one of those weapons. All right, so let me go back. So that's what this is, is one of the weapons that they provide. And then it basically has a mesh render, a texture, and of course the, the actual mesh. And then this is just basically part of their components. So the big piece here is the weapon controller. I show the weapon that I'm using, so this knows that this is the weapon. I also have a force, because if I hit, let's say that I hit play right now, and I change the force to be something like, let's do something like 100, and I hit a, and I hit a space. You're gonna see the force is not, it's not really realistic because, you know, it's just too close. It doesn't look like a real, like a real gun weapon. So, but if I change it to say something like 300, you can kind of see. So I'm using physics to basically generate a force on the bullets, and it makes it more realistic when you're doing that. I can also change the force mode. You can set it to impulse if you like to, and you can see that actually looks a little bit different. The simulation is different on an impulse versus a, fo versus a force. Also, velocity change is another one that you can use. And the last one was the acceleration. So if I go here, it just basically changes how we are applying forces to the bullet. So if I go back to 1000, we can see that, you know, that's a lot stronger. It's still not realistic, so that's what I kept it, you know, at a larger number. I'm probably just do like about 2000. And you can see how that goes all the way over there. And it's still not as fast, but if we do, let's do fours. You kind of see how it's bouncing off the floor. So let's just go ahead and do 5,000. And you can see that, that it's starting to look much better. There we go. So I'm going to set it just to 1,000 so we can see, you know, what's happening, what's happening with the bullet. So that's what the force and the bullet force is. The other thing that I needed to know is I want to, I want to know where, at what point I want to, I want to place a bullet. So this is basically the bullet initial position in respect to the weapon. So I'm basically posting, basically placing the bullet right here. So this is the position that I'm using to do that. That's the initial position. And the way that I did that is I basically grab a bullet and then look at the location that looks correct to me. And then I basically just grab those numbers and then use those numbers to set the bullet position. So the other thing that I, that I was doing before is I wasn't killing the bullets and you wanna make sure that you keep your game running you know with with high performance so that's why i'm basically removing some of these components as they get created so if you look at the bullet alive for and i hit space they're actually just leaving for one second but if i do 0.1 you can see that they just disappear after a tenth of a second and you can play with this number based on you know what you what you're trying to build of course if i want to make it bigger you can see that it's going to leave for for 10 seconds been but then your game is going to start to slow down. So you want to make sure you keep things, you know, at high, high performance before you, you make a decision like that. So I'm going to set it back to, to one second. I think that's fine. And then another thing that I want, that I was implementing and I actually implemented is the frequency. So you can see if I hit space, we're actually getting multiple bullets. And that's because I'm using a frequency to determine how many bullets to, to actually shoot at a single time. So if I set this to a one, you can see that now this is generating a lot more. And I'll show you the code so you can see how that works. So I'm gonna set it maybe 0.01. I'm only getting one bullet. And, but if you go higher on a number, you're gonna get more bullets because I'm using a while loop to basically to implement that. So that's basically what the weapon controller is. And the another issue that I was telling you about, like if I, if I were to do this and I shoot the rubber, or, but the, if the bullet goes too fast, a lot of times it wasn't colliding, so I wasn't able to capture the collision and therefore it wasn't actually moving at all. So I had to implement something different, so I, I ended up doing a ray cast on the bullet. So let me show you some of the setup on the bullet. So let's go ahead and go back. So the bullet is a basic, simple sphere, and instead of it, I have a VFX, basically a particle system that simulates the fire going through a laser fire going through the bullet and actually coming out of the coming out of the gun and then you know pop being part of the bullet so this is also part of the studio the cynthia studio asset for science fiction you can see on their effects they have multiple effects that you can use so i use that one because that's the one that i i kind of like 
So the other thing that I have in here is I have a sphere collider because I, I want this to basically to collide to anything that it hits. I also have a rigid body. And right now I have a set to kinematic because I want you to see when I play that it doesn't fall. But what it's using is actually using gravity and kinematic is set to false. And then I don't have rotation on this bullet because there's really no details. So there's really no, no need to rotate it. So everything is constrained to on X, Y, and Z. And then I also have a bullet controller script. And if you notice, I have a Raycast check units. So the way that this works is the bullet is gonna check 10 units away from the enemy or from anything that is in front of it. So if let's say that I'm shooting this bullet and I'm and let's say that the gun is behind the screen, maybe it's that way. And let's say that we are about 10, 10 units far from this. It's going to basically shoot a ray cast on the Z axis and it's gonna say, okay, is the enemy layer of type, is actually the layer of type enemy. And if you remember, I show you that this enemy has a layer, you know, a layer enemy. And that's what the bullet is doing, is checking, okay, if I'm 10 meters away from, from anything, if the layer is enemy, I'm going to apply a force to that other object I'm colliding with. So that's how I'm using, that's how I'm doing the collisions. I'm using a ray cast on the bullet. So this value here allows you to, you know, you can change it to one, you can change it to 20. It's just basically how far you want to detect the collision from the object that you're trying to collide. So for me, 10 work. The, the other thing that I also have is I wanted to control, you know, how far this enemy, so if I'm, if I'm hitting the, if I'm shooting the enemy, I want that enemy to react to the collision. So that's what I'm using the enemy, enemy impulse on hit. And what this is, is basically the force that gets applied to the enemy. So what I'm doing is I'm basically, if you look at it, it's actually the forward value because the value of Z, it's gonna be one. If you're doing forward and then I'm multiplying it by a default value of five. And I'll show you that in the code. So when this hits it, if I'm 10 units away from it, it's basically gonna shoot it back on the Z axis. So that's what that is. And then this basically allows you to determine what layer the bullet should be reacting or checking for. So in this case it's enemy because we're basically shooting enemies. So that's how the bullet looks like. So now let me go ahead and remove this. And I also wanna show you the other thing that I have in here is basically a simple audio. And if I hit play, you can see that I, you can hear some of the audio that I had initially. And I had that because I, for some reason I like listening to audio when I'm playing a game. So if I don't listen to audio, even when it's a prototype, it just it just drives me crazy. <laughs> so, so that's what that is. So la now let me show you some of the code so that I can explain it to you. So let's go into the weapon controller and then I'm just gonna double click on the script to open it up. And looks like it's not opening for some reason, but we'll click in here and do open C-sharp project. I think it's already open, that's why it wasn't opening. There we go. And then we can just close out of this. So I show you the weapon controller on the inspector and I show you that we had a bullet prefab. I also show you that we had a reference to the weapon, so that's why these two are serializable. I also show you that the bullet has a force and this is a force that I'm gonna apply to the bullet, so I set it to five by default and also the force mode that I apply to the bullet, that's what I'm I'm using here. And the bullet initial position, I also show you that. This is where the bullet is gonna first initialize from, and that's where it's gonna appear. And then I wanted to determine, and I show you that, like, you know, for how long do you wanna keep the bullet alive for? In this case, I have it alive for 20 minutes, that's the, the sorry, 20 seconds. So that is the default. And then the bullet frequency, I also show you that, and that, actually generates multiple bullets depending on the value that I have. And then I have a bullet timer. So, and also the bullet sound, which I'm not using right now, but I will use in, I actually have something already in place for that, but because I didn't find a really good sound, I just didn't want to use it. And if you notice, if I go to here, I actually do have the bullet sound here. And oh yeah, I set it to mute because I didn't want to, I didn't want to hear it. I didn't really like the sound that I found. But let me show you, let me show you that before we keep looking at the code. And you can hear, you know. It's gonna, I'm just gonna change the volume on the, 
on the main audio so you can hear the other sound. And that's, yeah, that's all working. So that's what that was. We go back to the code. So that's what the bullet sound is. And I use that to basically, as soon as I shoot, I basically generate that sound. I play that sound. So a couple of things in here that are that are fairly simple. I, I wanted to use the primary index trigger on the controller to basically shoot the robots when I put my headset on for Oculus. So that's what I'm doing here. If I'm using either the left, if I'm using the left one, or, the, or what's called the primary in my case, or I'm using the secondary. So that could be the, the left controller or the right controller. And if I'm pushing if I'm pushing the trigger button, then I'm basically gonna go into this if statement. Also as an override, you notice that I was hitting the space key. I, I did this because of development purposes. I wanted to make sure that it was working. So that's what I'm, I have basically a check for not only the Oculus, the OVR input, but also the keyboard input on my computer. So if that is true, if we're pressing one of those buttons, we basically play the bullet sound. And then I basically go through a while loop. And the first thing that I do is I shoot a bullet. I'll show you the implementation. I increment the timer. So I'm using time, that delta time, and I multiply it by one. So that I basically, you know, every time we go into fix update, and well, actually every time we are in the loop, because if this initiated already, it's basically gonna keep going until something breaks out of it. So that's what I'm using a timer here. If I if I reach the bullet frequency, which is 0.5, then we set the bullet timer to zero and then we break out of this while loop. And then basically the only way that we can get back into this while loop is by just hitting the OVR input, the primary index trigger, the secondary trigger, or the, the, space, the space on our keyboard. So that's what this is. So let me show you some of the shoot implementation. So this is actually what creates the bullet. So I show you the bullet prefab right above it, and I show you the bullet initial position, and then I basically set the, the rotation to quaternion that identity. Then what I do is I set the bullet transform parent to be the to be the parent of the of the weapon. So basically what, what's gonna happen is the weapon is gonna be the parent of the bullet. Then I set the location of the bullet to be the local position of the bullet initial position. And then I change the basically the parent of the bullet of the bullet to be the parent of the parent of the parent. The reason why I did this is because of the rotation issue that I had. You, I didn't want the bullet to be a parent of the weapon because if I rotate the weapon, the bullet, it's gonna rotate. That's not gonna look realistic. So thinking about this, you, I actually don't need this, but it gets overwritten here. So I'm just gonna keep it there for now and then I'll test it to make sure that it works. But this basically sets it to be the parent of nobody because it's gonna be the most, you know, the first node in the hierarchy. And in that way, if I rotate the weapon, it's not gonna cast a rotation on the bullet. So the next thing that I do is because we're using physics to move the bullet, is I get the rigid body of, of the bullet. And then I apply, once I get a reference to that rigid body, I apply a force at that position. Then I use the, basically I wanna make sure that I start at the, at the weapon transform that forward. So I wanna make sure that I'm always pointing forward based on the where the where the weapon is pointing to. And, and then I just multiply it by the force that I set right above it. I also set the, the bullet transform position. So this is where the force is gonna start. It's gonna start at the bullet transform position, which we already set it initially when we create the bullet. And then I apply the default force based on the force that gets assigned above it. Looks like this one is hard coded, so I need to I need to use I actually added that after the fact. So what I'm gonna do is just change that with the variable that we created so that it's more you know dynamic. And in fact I wasn't setting that and I thought it was applying changes, so we'll we'll test it one more time. And then what I do is I also destroy the bullet based on the bullet alive for. So before we test this new change that I did here, let's go ahead and look at the ball at the bullet controller. So the bullet control is fairly simple. All I have is a raycast check units. This is a float. And this determines, you know, like I was explaining to you, how far do I need to be from the enemy before the raycast actually finds a collision. And then this is gonna be for the enemy to be, you know, the force that I apply to the enemy once we once we have a collision. 
And then the layer mask is I wanted to make sure that um, I was only applying that collision or checking for that collision on the layers of type enemy. So this notation right here is basically everything. This is just something that Unity provides and the code provides to set it to the default. And then the next thing that I do is because we're dealing with physics, I also use a fix update. I get just uh, basically an empty variable of raycast head and then I use physics that ray cast, and then I use the transfer position, which is the position of this object, then transform that transform direction, which I use to basically I pass in the vector three that forward, and that's gonna be the transform direction that I use. Then the what I'm doing here is I'm basically using the out keyword because I want to know if the ray cast generates a collision. I want to make sure that I get the value of the hit. So this is the notation that they use. They use an out variable to do that. You pass the, you basically pass the, you pass the variable in and with, with the out, it allows you to get that value out. And then the, I show you the raycast check units, which is how far we want to do the raycast. And then you can also specify the layer, which is what I'm doing here. So I show you there was a yellow, basically a yellow debug line that was showing when we were colliding with an enemy. And this is what's doing that. I'm using debug that basically draw ray, I pass in the transform position, and then I do the same similar math to what I'm passing in here. And then this is what's specifying basically the color of that draw ray. Then what I do is as soon as I hit, if we get in here, we're basically hitting an enemy. And as soon as I get in here, like I say, I, I draw a ray, and I also get a component of that. I try to get the component, well, actually get the component of the hit which in our case, I know it's going to be an enemy that I'm hitting that has a rigid body. In fact, we probably should be checking in here to make sure this is not null because if I'm hitting another enemy and it doesn't have a rigid body, this is gonna cause a problem. So I'm just gonna say if enemy rigid body is not null, then we do wanna do this. Otherwise it's gonna cause an exception. All right, so now that we check for that, I apply a force to the enemy. So the enemy impulse hit, which I show you here, so I'm using vector three, that forward, that's why we saw a value of five in the inspector because vector that three forward is basically zero, zero, one. And then I'm multiplying by a default value of five. That's why you saw, you saw five in the inspector. And then I get the heat transform position because this is where the, basically the force is gonna start from. And then I use a force mode impulse. We could also add something here like we did on the weapon controller, which I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna use so that we can keep them consistent. So this one is going to be also, we can just say enemy force mode because this is what's getting applied to it. Let's just say impulse force mode and then I'll just, that way we don't hard code it in there. Okay, so that, that works. Then we don't need this too. And I think everything else is clean. So that's basically those two, the, the weapon controller, which is fairly simple and also the bullet controller, which is basically responsible for colliding with enemies and also ray casting against enemies. So let me show you, let's go ahead and go back into Unity and I'm gonna mute the game and hit play. I wanna see how that change that I made on the force mode is gonna affect the game. So let's go back here and let's look and see. So I'm gonna go back into my weapon controller and right now we have it set to force, let's set it to impulse. And in fact, it's really hard to see what's happening. Let me go ahead and change it to maybe something like, okay, so that's not making many changes. Let's go ahead and velo velocity. There's definitely something happening. It's just too fast, I think, to be able to see it. Acceleration looks actually really cool. You can see how they are accelerating. And then let's go ahead and change it to impulse and see if we, let's do 100. Let's do a smaller value. There we go. So it looks like impulse is basically, you have to lower the number. And let's go back in here and let's do value of 10. There we go, so that's changing. So that looks like it's changing and it's applying. So basically different force modes. So let me go ahead and, and show you a little bit of the scene so that you can get an idea of how this looks. And we can go, okay, there we go. So. I show you some of these on the previous video, but this is basically the entire city. 
And the way that I'm gonna break up the game is only where I have the Robo train now is where the VR game is gonna be from. So we're basically gonna start right from here. Let's go ahead and select the controller. And then I'm going to add a region so that we can't move away from it. And then at some point I'm gonna have the robots basically attack us. And I'm gonna have different enemies. So the goal for these videos in this series of videos to show you how to create a, a simple VR shooting game that it's not only simple, but it basically gives you enough information for future games that you want to create of this genre or, or different genres where you can apply some of these concepts. So the next thing that I want to show you is let me show you how this looks. Let me see if I still have that video. It looks like I do have that video of when I did a test on my Oculus. There we go. And let me just fast forward a little bit. Alright guys, so that's everything that I wanted to show you and thank you very much for your time. Alright guys, thank you very much for watching this video, I really appreciate your time and if you have any questions about what I just showed you, please let me know in the comments. Also be sure to check out GameDev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers and also find me in Patreon.com where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access to source code. Thank you very much guys.